Hey everyone, it's Slasher Dude 2000 or Slasher Dude if you'd rather call it, and Cameron Scott. And tonight we are doing Friday the Thirteenth Part Five: A New Beginning, or shall we say, Part Five: The Copy Killer or Copy Cat Killer. The second film. In uh, the Friday 13th uh, franchise without Jason. Which is kind of sad. Um, yeah. I know last week we did the usual synopsis after our facts. But Cameron would like to do the facts first. And we will be adding a new... Part to the segment yeah. called the Killer Stats. Yeah. Oh, you want me to do that now? Start with. Let's go with the plan you had. All right. Cool. All right. So we're gonna go from our, the top to the bottom. There are four stabbings. One peeping tom. One Stumaker stab through the window, one semi-nude sleeper through the bed, one pop and lock stabbing, three chopping sprees by axe, three throat slits, which include roadside slit, post-sex outdoor slit, and an outhouse throat slit. There are three off-screen kills. There are two impalements, one outhouse, ooh baby, uh, impalement, and one falling from barn impalement, and then... Coming to the bottom here, one head crush by leather strap, one decapitation, one face slash. Those are the kills for a, a total of 18 kills. Non-kill uh, stats, two pairs of boobs, two rednecks, one reckless underage relationship, and one new hockey mask. Woohoo! And he, he will be also giving the synopsis, as usual. Yeah. Um, so this takes place uh, a, a few years after... I mean, I forgot the number of years. Uh, I think it's ten years after the fourth film. Uh, we're following a much older Tommy Jarvis, and he has been... Uh, placed into an institutional home for his, his uh, mental health, if you will. And while he is there, there are several others who are, you know, uh, other uh, patients. And uh, long story short, uh, deaths start piling up that look oddly like Jason's M.O. And uh, the question as you're watching the film is, is it Tommy Jarvis? Did he finally snap? Or is Jason back? Or do we have a new killer? And speaking of those Tommy Jarvis's adventures into this movie, if you have played Friday the 13th the game and you've heard of the Pamela tapes, there is also the Tommy Jarvis tapes, or Jarvis tapes, which explains how he got to Whitehurst. Ah. It explains that there were multiple other um, mental hospitals before this one. This... Including, including... The hospital from Fry A Nightmare on Elm Street 3. Oh, I like that connectivity. He was also in a hospital in Haddonfield. But yeah, we're basically focusing on teenage Tommy Jarvis, and I will be giving the facts now. For the 13th Part 5, A New Beginning came out in 1985. The it was the first film that Jason or his mother is not in. The story is written by Martin Kitroser, 
and David Cohen. Screenplay is also written by Kit Roser, David Cohen, and Danny Steinman. It was directed by Danny Steinman, and this is... This was his final film ever. Before he died ten years later. Um, the producer is Timothy Silver. The music is again by Harry Manfredi, which surprised me that he's done most of these movies. Um, the film location was... They were actually three, Agora Hills, Beverly Hills, and Camarillo, all in California. Um, Roy Burns, a.k.a. Jason in this movie, is played by Dick Weinerd. There was a cameo by the original Jace, by Jason, in the beginning, but... He's not counted since it was just a cameo. He was played by, I believe, the guy's name was Morse. Tommy Jarvis is played by John Shepard because Corey Feldman was busy with the Goonies. Corey Feldman actually, before the Goonies, played a cameo of 12 year old Tommy in the beginning. And we get a new young child, Reggie, who is played by A.K. Reggie the Reckless, who is played by Shavar Ross. And should we get into the kills, since you already gave the stats? Yeah, oh, uh, one other uh, fact that I found. Corey Feldman, he filmed the, uh, his scenes... Um, on Sundays in between uh, Goonies shoots because that was the only day he had off and the footage was shot in his parents' backyard. Huh. Yeah. So yeah, we're getting down to the kills since... Thank you, Cameron, for the backyard news. Yeah. Oh, I forgot, and my... This is, uh, the, the slasher stats is a work in progress. I forgot, this is one of the most important kills. A flare, to, one flare to the mouth. Right, um, I'll go first. Favorite kills? Tina's death, which was basically, she took the... She took a hedge clipper to the face, basically, as she was naked. Which, in the video game Friday the 13th, has become Roy's main weapon after that famously known kill using something more gardeny right before he does the. He, um. Hedge clippers, it, not hedge clippers, um, weed whacker in the seventh movie. And Junior's, we get to see Junior's head roll, which I found was pretty awesome. First, um, decapitation in these movies. Not counting the mother. Topic is Ethel and Junior. Uh, they provided the comedic element in the film as well as uh, Reggie the Reckless and uh, Demon. But uh, it's kind of interesting that this film, uh, really quickly, uh, you know, there's this really serious note about mental illness for Tommy. His story is very, very serious. And, uh, you know, they're trying to go into the psychological aspects of surviving Jason. But then you have these really comedic moments as well, like with Ethel and uh, Junior, come get your stew. And then you got the, you know, uh, Re uh, Reggie the Reckless and Demon, you know, Demon always trying to hand out food of some kind. 
like mostly enchiladas, but he's always like, hey, you want a piece of pizza? Oh, hey, you want a taco? Oh, you want an enchilada? Hmm. And le- my least favorite is Anita. Because obviously it's an un- unseen kill. I mean, all we see is her outside the outhouse just laying on the ground. F- I just... Ugh. I hate these censored and unseen kills. That's what makes these movies a bit bland. Yeah. And bringing back... Go ahead. I was just going to say, you know, uh, they have a high kill count in this. But, you know, if they would have shaved off those, uh, you know, uh, off-screen kills, they still would have had a really good, solid uh, spree, you know? So... I think you're right. I think they should have just focused on, you know, minimize it a little bit so it's manageable so we can see everything. Right. And then we'll focus on those. Like, uh, like for instance, the, that, that couple at the diner, just cut, you know, I mean, yeah, we get to see their deaths, but, you know, if you would have taken that scene out, you would have had time to show Anita, would have had time to show uh, the counselors and, the, and George, uh, the chef, you know, we would have been able to see the other members get killed. Right. And bring back something from last week's movie, we have the funniest kill, in my opinion. Which, speaking of flares, this one had a huge flare. We have Vinny, who was killed by a road flare while trying to fix the car. Yeah. Which I feel was kind of funny, adding in the greasers into... um... a movie that's a lot later than... you'd see a greaser. Yeah, Yeah, no, but I I, I think a flare into the mouth, that... You know, singeing your throat and everything, that, that sounds really gruesome. Uh, that was actually one of my favorite two deaths. The other one um, is the strap to the head. That just, oh, just the pain level of that must have been you know, horrendous. So uh, the flare to the mouth and the head crushing by leather strap, those are my two uh, main kills for, for this film. And your least favorite? Hmm. Yeah, just the the three off-screen kills. You know, I mean, it would have been interesting to see how how uh, they were handled. Like, uh, I forget the main counselor's name, but he seemed like a tough guy. I bet you would have put up a fight. It would have been interesting to see that. Right. Um. So yeah, since we're done with the kills, I have more facts. This is the movie that showed my favorite song, His Eyes by Pseudo Echo. Which a lot of people also call Violet's theme song. Crispin Glover is dancing, and, and he's very, you know, that's a very uh, famous scene. But, you know, that pop lock scene, that Violet's dance, like, that's pretty entertaining as well. And she's hot. So. You can see why I was in. I love this. I started loving this movie. I actually know someone that looks so similar to Violet. Huh. Um. And this movie, my god, so much stabbing. It's just, most of the kills in this movie is nothing but stabs, if you pay attention. And the guys were totally stabbing the girlfriends. 
which is common in this franchise, so. Yeah, I think this movie also got the most sex in a movie, in a Friday the 13th movie. Yeah, I read in the, on the Wikipedia page that the, the directors, or the director uh, said that they had filmed so many uh, nude scenes that they could have made a porno with it. So I guess there's a whole bunch of footage that uh, did not leave the cutting room floor, so... Right, and, um, there was an, there was something else. There was, uh, the, um, so I guess you could call it the sexiest Friday the 13th movie. Yeah, yeah, there's some good stuff there. I still like, uh, uh Part two, uh, you know, the girl with, uh, that was uh, with Tom, the guy in the wheelchair. Yeah, she was okay. I get it. You know, I get it. Most people are going to go for, you know, the hot boobs in this film. I mean, the, for me, that just, you know, personal favorite. Well, personally, for me, the most remember memorable is the first one. What's her name? Who gets killed... And then we get that huge, amazing shot as she's falling. The girl in the bathroom. Oh yeah, the, yeah. There's, she's like semi-nude for like like ten or fifteen minutes in the movie. God, my girlfriend's gonna kill me if she sees this. Overview, you mean? Yeah. It was a good movie. I mean, everyone already knew who the killer was from the beginning just from looking at Roy's face. Um, he l basically gave it away right away that he's going to be the killer. Um, yeah. The guess who... Kind of story was okay. I this used to be one of my favorite movies, but it got replaced, and you'll find out my actual favorite movie pretty soon. Um, just yeah. For me, you know, it, it's a solid film, and it, it deserves more appreciation within the Friday the 13th community, uh, just for its entertainment value. You know, yes, there's the sex appeal, as we mentioned, the high body count, the creativity of the kills, the humor, the characters are actually, you know, uh, interesting, uh, but it's just, you know, yeah, we're just, we're missing Jason, because Roy, you know, he's a great killer and all. But, you know, because they were trying to play off of, is it Tommy, is it, you know, we don't get to actually see the killer a lot. And part of a Friday the 13th movie is seeing the imposing figure of Jason Voorhees. So, uh, for me, I'm going to rate it at uh, probably a 7. Uh, I gave the last film, a, I believe I gave it an 8 or an 8.5. So, I would put this under uh, the final chapter, just because, again, for me... Uh, Part four is, you know, still a very memorable film. So. Right. Well, for me, this movie eh, would have given it higher, but the sex appeal is good. The it's just all those stabbings. They could have done so many creative kills, but instead they just. Add a stab scene, print, copy, print, copy, paste, just seriously. I, 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 th I, think, I, th I think you brought it up earlier, you know, it, instead of focusing on such a high kill count, they should have minimized it a little bit, focused, you know, on getting, you know, all those kills on screen, and then just making each one different. 
So I think that's the big one of the biggest flaws of the film is they just try to put in too many kills, and when you do that, you're uh, you know eliminating eliminating opportunities you know to uh, have scary moments. So you go from comedy to really quick kills, and sometimes it's fun to just have like drawn out kill scenes. And plus, we don't see much of Tommy close to the ending of the movie. I mean. I get it, You, he's a part of the story in the beginning, but we need more Tommy instead of just following Reggie and the female counselor. Who's, her name was Pam, which is funny, the final girl in this movie is Pam, which is, <laughs> that's really interesting, so... Right, um... um. It, seriously, we didn't get that much of Tommy as we wanted originally. I, I read somewhere that John Shepard uh, thought that he was doing a different type of horror film, and then when he find out that he was doing the fifth installment of Friday the 13th, that he uh, you know, lost kind of interest in, in, in the movie and in the role. He felt very disappointed. In fact, almost everybody that I looked into that did part five, like, looks back at it as, like, you know, with disdain, with disappointment. I, I don't know if anybody, uh, unless you have any other facts, that, that liked doing part five, I guess everybody at that time hated it. You know, like, they're like, oh man, this this is like the, my career low. Yeah, I really haven't heard anyone say they enjoyed working on it. Um, I mean, for most of them, it was just another paycheck. For Man Freedy, I mean, he's been doing these movies since the beginning, and... Again, just another paycheck. Yeah. So, I'm going to rate this a 4.7. Oh, that's very bold of you. Yeah, I, again, I'd rather see more creative kills than, I mean, we got the belt, we got the hedge clippers, and... That's the only interesting kills that I've really seen. I mean, I like the scene where with Demon and Anita, but just wasn't enough for me. I wonder if uh, Steven Spielberg got the uh, T Rex and the toilet scene from Jurassic Park from uh, Part Five with the <laughs> Demon in the out of. <laughs> Jurassic Park actually came before er, Part 5. What? No, Part, part 5, I, I think, came out in, like, 1987, or... This came yeah, out in 1980... Hold on, I have it right here. Um... 1985. Like 93 or 90, 95, yeah. Huh. So, who knows? <laughs> so, yeah. guys, we will be doing um, part six next week. The first movie where we gain Zombie Jason. Um, it's the third and final installment of the Tommy Jarvis trilogy. Um, <laughs> we get a bit of Frankenstein in the next movie. So, stay tuned for part six, Jason Lives, and any final words, Cameron? And watch out for rubber spiders. Ah, yes. This has been the Slasher Club with Friday the 13th. Part 5, A New Beginning.
Good night, ladies and gentlemen.